San Diego 6 News in the morning. Your station for balanced news. Still ahead, we're going to hear from a doctor uh, that's making incredible strides with Lyme disease. Brooke's going to be talking with him coming up next. Well, you just heard about my personal battle with Lyme disease, and so many others here in San Diego and around the country are suffering similar health challenges. Dr. Mitch Cronenberg, president and scientific director at La Jolla Institute for Allergy and Immunology, is here to tell us about some groundbreaking research that could benefit millions. Thank you, Dr. Cronenberg, for being with us today. You're welcome. Why don't let me start with you telling us a little bit about what you do and your research. Well, our laboratory has been interested in a particular type of white blood cell called a natural killer T cell. It has a very aggressive sounding name, but actually it can help defend you from a number of infections. And these T cells, are we born with these or is this something that you can acquire more? How does it work? Well, we are born with them and we know in fact they're present in cord blood. So in the, in the very neonatal period. Mm -hmm. And uh, also some of the experimental animals that we study, usually uh, mice, also have the same cells. Okay, so how does this relate to Lyme disease and other infectious diseases and how can it help? Uh, what were your findings exactly and how can that help for people with infectious diseases? Sure. Well, it turns out there are many different types of white blood cells. So the natural killer T cells are actually a relatively small subset, 1% or less. And what we found some years ago is that in humans and in mice, the natural killer T cells can recognize a special part of the organism that causes Lyme disease. And what we showed in the most recent studies uh, is we can, we can cause Lyme disease experimentally. Of course, we don't do this in people. We do this in laboratory mice. And we have special strains of mice that, are, that don't have natural killer T cells. And those mice were much more susceptible to getting Lyme disease. Um, after being bitten by a tick, as we saw earlier, uh, you actually get Lyme disease from a tick. But what the tick is doing, I have to stress, is giving you a bacteria. It's transmitting a bacteria to the organism, to you or to the experimental animals that we study. So are you basically saying that the more natural killer T cells someone has or even an animal has, uh, the less likely they are or more likely they are to be able to fight this? the more likely they are to be able to fight it. So the natural killer T cells really protected the mice from getting, particularly the arthritis complication of, uh, of being bitten by infected ticks, which actually we got shipped to us from Connecticut, okay. where, where the disease is so prevalent. So is the hope that in knowing that uh, natural killer T cells can help you fight uh, that sort of infection or other infections as well, uh, is the hope that we at some point can, can give humans more natural killer T cells? Yes, well, I think the, the easiest thing that we can conceptualize at this point is giving humans um, substances or chemicals which will stimulate their own natural killer T cells. We all have natural killer T cells, but interestingly, the percent or the number that we have in our blood can vary by a hundredfold between different individuals. So one of the things we're investigating now is whether those people who actually have Lyme disease have fewer natural killer T cells. That's something we're still studying. That just goes to show you that medicine in many areas is really an art, not a science. People are going to be reacting differently. Uh, you were telling me earlier that you sort of stumbled across this for Lyme disease. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, our interest in the laboratory has been focused on natural killer T cells rather than Lyme disease per se. And several years ago we, we discovered what it is um, that natural killer T cells recognize, a particular type of chemical that's in various bacteria. And reading the literature we, we guessed that Borrelia burgdorferi, that's a long name, mm -hmm. but that's the spirochete or the bacteria that actually causes Lyme disease. Mm -hmm. And Borrelia has something that looks like it would stimulate natural killer T cells. And then we got in, involved in studying these complex systems for infection. As, as in your segment, as you pointed out, it's very hard to diagnose even when a laboratory animal is infected with Lyme disease. Right, and that's the problem. You're seeing video there on the screen um, of what I went through, and I went through that because they were really unable to diagnose it with the test being right. inaccurate 60% of the time. Yeah. It's very difficult to determine whether or not someone has that. So I want to globalize your research a little bit more. This can, your findings can help people not only with Lyme disease, but with other diseases as well. Can you tell us which? Yes, well, there are 
other bacteria, not all bacteria, but there are other bacteria that also stimulate these natural killer T cells, including bacteria that cause pneumonia and meningitis in children and so on. So we hope that um, stimulating these cells will be useful in developing vaccines against a number of infectious diseases, not only Lyme disease. Okay, well, I thank you so much personally for your research. It's certainly going to help me and, and hopefully so many others as well. And we thank you for being here with us today. You're welcome. It's good to see that you seem to be so healthy oh, and doing so well. Thank you so much. It's been a long road, but <laughs> getting there slowly but surely. Thanks, Dr. Cronenberg.